Hi everyone, this is Pastor John, and it's take five with Pastor John. I've titled uh, my talk this afternoon, Asleep at the Wheel. Actually, my scripture is fairly long this time, but uh, I think it's really important. I'm taking it from Second Peter chapter 3, and here's the word of the Lord. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, it perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto the fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Now the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt, with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless we, according to his promise, Look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. As also in his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. Now here's a few thoughts, like I usually do, that I want to just sort of plant in your mind. And uh, if you want a copy of my notes, please email me. I'll send them out to you. I'm already sending them out to a host of people that have already given me uh, their names and emails. So you're, you're welcome to have a copy of them for free as well. Here's a few thoughts that you should consider with respect to this scripture. There really are two kingdoms on this very earth. There's two kingdoms. It's the kingdom of darkness and it's the kingdom of light. The kingdom of Christ and the kingdom of Antichrist. We spoke about that two or three times ago with respect to these two kingdoms that are becoming very visible. One is very visible. The other is partially hidden. To most people, the kingdom of God is, is partially hidden. The clash of the kingdoms is inevitable, and it's developing even as we speak, where these two kingdoms are vying with each other, and one of these kingdoms will prevail. Now, we live in both because our feet are on the earth, but you really can only belong to one. It's, it's a matter of citizenship. Although I have a Canadian, citizen, Canadian citizenship, my real citizenship is in heaven. I, I have been transformed by the power of the gospel, by the blood of Jesus, into the kingdom of his dear son, speaking of the kingdom of Christ. 
So you can live in both of these kingdoms or these worlds, but uh, you only have citizen, real citizenship in one to which you owe your ultimate loyalty. Another thought that I have is uh, the rapture of the church is imminent. That, that means imminent means it can happen at any time. Now, now you may not believe in it or place it in correct uh, prophecy time periods or whatever, uh, but, but that's not really my point. My, my point is, it is real, and it will happen, and probably very soon. And whether you believe it or not is a vertical consequence, as far as your theology is concerned, but it's great conse uh, consequence as to whether you'll spend time with the Lord or not. And so we'd encourage you to look into the scriptures to find out about the rapture, the coming of Jesus Christ for his saints. Now, scoffing doesn't bother me, not, not anymore at my age. Uh, the only one that scoffing hurts is the unbeliever. If they begin to scoff at the teachings of the scripture that have been given by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, if they scoff at that, they become the great loser in all this. It doesn't bother me because I, I know that that should be part of what happens to an on-fire, born-again Christian. As you share the Word of God, there will be people that will always laugh at you and always scoff about you and at you. Now, this passage puts it quite properly. And uh, this is a scripture that has, has been with me all of my life, and I find it very interesting. People are going to be saying, and even right now, some preachers are going to be saying as they watch and listen to this, we've heard this all before. We've heard this message for years and years and years. And all of the messengers that gave this message, they've all died. And that's what, that's what uh, this, this passage of Scripture that we read speaks about. All these messengers have died. There's still a few living yet, and there's a few new ones that are coming along that believe the message. But the greatest majority have died. And the event hasn't happened. So their conclusion is, if it hasn't happened yet, then it's not going to happen. I, I was going over two or three examples of prophecies that were made in the Bible that actually came to pass. God called Moses out in the desert and said, go to Pharaoh and say, let my people go. And there came this great exodus out of the land of Egypt, out into the, the, out into the desert again. And finally into Canaan land, which was the homeland of the Israelite people. And so I look at Moses and I think, how many people scoffed him for how long? And then I look at Abraham and Lot. And they went down into, into this city called Sodom and Gomorrah. And when God said to Abraham and Lot, you better get up out of that city. I'm going to do something. Like people would scoff and just, well, it can't happen. It's never happened before. We haven't seen it before. But it, but it did happen. As it happened for Moses, it happened for Lot and Abraham. And then we think of poor Noah. Well, my, my. If uh, that man dedicated his life to preaching the gospel of salvation, come into the ark, come in where they're safe, God's going to send destruction upon the earth. And the people of that time probably scoffed and laughed and thought he was a real old fool. Well, the prophets were sure in their message then. They knew that the message came from God. And as we take the word of God today, we must be just as sure that this message is from God himself. And if it is, then we shouldn't be worrying about the scoffers or the unbelievers that don't think it will ever happen. The scripture has shown to us, Jesus said that he is coming and he's coming back again. I love this scripture and I preached from it for so many years in pastoral ministry and otherwise, where in the New Testament, I've loved preaching from the New Testament, especially the Gospels and then the book of Acts, Romans, etc. But in the book of Acts, Jesus ascends into heaven. And then there's two men that are standing there saying, like to the disciples, like, why are you gazing up into heaven? Like, what's your fascination of seeing him go? The, the truth is, he will so come. He will come again. In the same manner he went into heaven, he's going to come back again. Now, that's the word of God. So the prophets were sure in their message. 
They knew the message was from God, and many times they had angelic visitors that told them that the things of God were going to take place. My, th my thinking is that many, many people are asleep at the wheel. And that's where the title of my, my five minutes comes from here. Um, th those who hold the wheel of the car, they're directing the car. Those that are at the wheel in the ship, they're directing the ship. And those that are uh, looking after the church, they're they, got, they got their hand on the wheel. They're guiding it and directing it. But I, I, I'm, I'm extremely concerned that, that if we don't wake up soon, there'll be great disaster. Ministers should begin to teach the words of Christ. Words of Christ from the Gospels. If I go away, I will come again and receive you to, to myself. In such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man will come. These are the direct words of Jesus and of his disciples that there is going to be a taking away of the children of God. I, I encourage you, and I, I'm speaking to maybe pastors and those who even are prophetic scholars, now set aside some of your charts and your detailed lists of, of every beast uh, of Daniel and Revelation. I've studied them all of my life. Uh, I, I, I dedicated so much of my time to it. And if you're not careful, you're, you're trying to mark every hour and, and moment and day and month. And uh, you begin to talk about the beasts of Revelation and the horns on the beasts and of the vials that are going to be poured out, etc., etc., etc. I, I want to encourage you to hone in on the truth, the primary truth, the major truth. O other things can be okay, but the main truth that needs to get out is that Jesus is coming soon. Get your people prepared, because their eternal destiny is at stake. I want to read that couple of verses from that same passage in, from the Amplified Bible. So just hold with me for a moment or, or two and we'll be finished. Here it's from the, the Amplified Bible, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 3-7. to 7. First of all, know without any doubt that mockers will come in the last days with their mocking, following after their own human desires and saying, where is the promise of his coming? What has become of it? For ever since the fathers fell asleep in death, all things have continued exactly as they did from the beginning of creation. For they willingly forget the fact that the heavens existed long ago by the word of God, and the earth was formed out of the water and by the water, through whom the world at that time was destroyed by being flooded with water. But by his word, the present heavens and earth are being reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and the destruction of ungodly people. So time is unfolding and moving along very quickly. And if ever there's a time to be preparing ministers of the gospel, if there's ever a time to be preparing our people for the return of Christ, it's now. We're seeing things unfolding around the world. Keep your eyes on Israel. Just excited about some of the recent news that I've read uh, uh, about Israel and about new, new weapons that have been formed. And as I look at Israel, I begin to see the unfolding plan of God and things building up for the end time when Jesus sh shall come back again. I've wanted to share this with, with all my love and concern. And so I hope that you receive the message and that somehow or another the Spirit of God will touch you and cause you to begin to look in the direction of the end times and of preparing your people to serve Jesus. For those that don't know Christ as their Savior, to get ready to meet him in the air. May God bless you. Have a great week as you serve Jesus. We'll see you again. Bye now.